I just built a mini prompt engineer in N8N that can create the perfect prompt for you, whether it's OpenAI, Gemini, Anthropic, or any LM you can think of. Just tell it what you want the prompt for and the LM you want to use, and voila. It's a super simple workflow that anyone can use, edit, and definitely improve on. In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from guessing how to write the right prompt to just asking for what you need and allowing the N8N workflow to come up with the best prompt possible. Let's dive right in. All right, so if we hop into N8N, just as promised, it's a fairly simple workflow. Now you can see here we have the AI agent at the center of it, and this AI agent has a series of instructions. And instructions are pretty long, but I'll give you the summary of it since you'll have access to this, the prompt, and everything else, as usual, in the description below. The main idea of this workflow is when you send a chat from this node here, and we can just expose this by clicking chat, you'll be able to ask for a prompt of your choice, whether it's for generating blogs, generating copy, generating brainstorming, or whatever you need. It will then send that request, if we just hide the chat right here, to the AI agent, which will talk to this OpenAI chat module to make sure that it knows which model you wanna to talk to and exactly what is the core scope of the prompt you want. So based on the request you send, it will push back on you and say, hey, do you want me to optimize a prompt for OpenAI, Gemini, Anthropic, or do you have a wildcard? In this workflow, we have four sub workflows. One is for OpenAI, where you have a mini prompt engineering prompt that's optimized for OpenAI prompts. And in the same way, we have one for Anthropic and Gemini, where the workflows are actually identical. If we take a quick peek here at the OpenAI one, if we take a quick zoom in just a tad right here, there we go, oh, just a bit too much. You'll see that we have this workflow input trigger when it's actually invoked by the agent module. And then we have a prompt here where it goes through and it's optimized for creating a prompt for OpenAI, understanding the nuances between how to prompt reasoning models. And those are ones like 01, 03, anything with an O, or the old world models, which are like 4.0, 4.5, and anything before that generation of models. Now, how did I come up with this prompt? Am I a savant? No, we did it through research, but I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. But if we take a look at the rest of the workflow, we have one more portion here, one more node that just double checks the quality of the prompt initially produced just to proofread it and refine it. And then it sends it right back to our original workflow. And if you look at the remaining ones, they are identical in actual structure. But when it comes to the underlying prompts, again, depending on the LM and the ones I focused on are Anthropic, Gemini and OpenAI, just because there are very interesting nuances between all of those platforms, it is optimized for creating a prompt for that respective LM. Now you might be wondering why I have the Google Gemini chat model here instead of our original workflow where we have OpenAI. And that's because I wanted the freedom to be able to have as long context as possible when it comes to these models, because if there is a lot of nuance, there's a lot of reading to do for the prompt on how it should structure its prompts to be optimized for that particular task slash language model and how it behaves, I wanted the freedom to inexpensively have a token window of around a million tokens. Whereas OpenAI, the standard models, would have an input tokens anywhere from 20,000 to 100,000 token input, and it's fairly expensive. Now you can obviously change this to whatever you want. End of the day, you just wanna make sure that the size of the prompt that you have here in the AI agent module is compatible and is small enough for that context window. In terms of performance, you might wanna use a reasoning model, which you can use Gemini 2.0 thinking, which is a reasoning version for Gemini, up to you. I just found that we got decent results just using the straight out of the box Gemini 2.0 flash model. So if we go back to our parent model here, let's actually give this a shot and put it in action. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy little tool here called Whisperflow, which is basically a transcription tool that I can use anywhere where there's a text box. And I'm just going to verbally ask for my prompt. All right, so I wanna create a prompt that will be an expert at taking a very minimal amount of input, which is information about a business and create an entire AI roadmap for that business based on the industry and nuances it has. It has to be a perfect prompt that is sophisticated, can take variable inputs, and most importantly, is malleable. 
So I'll just let go. It'll quickly transcribe it. And what I really like about this tool is it learns my vocabulary and pronunciation over time. So if I tend to mispronounce words, it just makes my life a lot easier. So I will send this request. And what it should do is push me back and say, hey, what model do you want to use? So now it's telling me to better assist. Could you please specify which AI model you'd like to use for generating this prompt? Here are the options. One is open AI models. And then I basically put in a list in the underlying prompt, GPT 4.0, 4.0 mini, 0.3 mini, et cetera, Anthropic and Gemini. So in this case, I will say, I want to optimize this for 3.7 sonnet for Claude. I'll just let go. There we go. Now it should be smart enough to go back to this workflow here and then invoke the right sub workflow, which it did. It knows that it has to talk to the anthropic prompt engineer that has specific instructions for anthropic prompts. And then within 10 to 15 seconds, it's going to come back with that response and it should output it right here, totally end to end. And then what we could do as an adjusted version is say, you know what, I'll put it in markdown so it clearly delineates it. But if we just pull up the chat a tad here, you can see it's come up with a title for the prompt. It says, you are an AI strategy consultant with a deep expertise in devising actionable AI roadmaps for businesses. Your task is to create a comprehensive step-by-step -step plan that aligns with AI tech with the strategic goals and operational nuances of a business. And then it has context. It has instructions to the prompt itself, which is restate the business information. It basically created a mini agentic prompt here, which is cool. And we can refine it. And the reason why it will remember what we're talking about is we have this window buffer memory module here, which just maintains the thread of the conversation. So I'm going to say, this is good, but I want it to be less of an agentic prompt and more so a prompt that will just take an input, let's say at the very bottom of a prompt, leave placeholders for the name of the business, the industry of the business and what the business does, and then just extrapolate based on that. And it would be ideal if you could return it in markdown format. So in this case, we can have a feedback loop with our mini prompt engineer that is good at all kinds of models and prompting styles. And voila, we get a prompt that's adjusted in markdown. And you can see here, it's put the placeholders for insert business name, insert industry, as well as insert business description. Now, copy wise, could we improve it? Absolutely. But you get the actual idea here. And if we switch this and said, I want you to now create this exact same scope of a prompt, but using Gemini instead, specifically Gemini 2.0 flash. Now, even though we are shifting, it should be smart enough to know that we now have to invoke a different agent, which is the Google prompt engineer, which there you go. It is. And because it's using Gemini, then it's gonna be pretty quick. Like you see right there, it's gonna come back and it even remembered our instruction for Markdown. And here it has this version of the prompt for that exact same scope. And just to follow through this example to the finish line, if we say, okay, now I want you to optimize it for the reasoning model 03 mini for OpenAI, it should be able to just carry that over. And even though I said 03 mini, uh, verbally, it should be smart enough to know that we're talking about uh, OpenAI 03 Mini, the actual model, and then it was almost instantaneous in this response, and we got this, and now we have three separate versions optimized for three different LLMs, and if you're wondering why, we have one more module here, which is the other one. I left this for you, so whether you want DeepSeek, Quen, insert name of model here within N8N, you want to call that. This sub workflow at the very end is just like the rest of them, except it has a vanilla prompt that is not structured for anything in particular. You can go in, adjust it to whatever you want, and then you can now add that to your repertoire of different mini prompt engineers at your disposal. Now, what might be helpful is quickly going over what the different styles and differences are with these LMs as a bit of a cheat sheet for you to know how to adjust them, tailor them, or create a new one for a different LM that's not in this pile. So if we go to the first one, which is OpenAI, and we double click on this agent here, you'll see that we have a prompt that is fairly beefy. And again, I won't read it in depth, but we'll go to a quick slide to give you a preview of the differences between these models. So when it comes to OpenAI, the non-reasoning models, which are GPT-40, 4.5, anything before that generation. And just as a rule of thumb, any model that doesn't have an O in front of it is a non-reasoning model. 
meaning you put input, you get output, but there's no quote unquote thinking that actually occurs. Now in general, with these types of models, you want to spoon feed examples, depending on the nature of the task. If it's writing or style or copy related, one to three examples tends to be pretty good. Whereas with reasoning models, you don't really need many leading examples. You just need a dump of the actual context of the goal and it's smart enough to go the next couple steps on its own. And with these types of LLMs, structuring your prompt in the old style of markdown and delineating different sections, that all helps a lot with reducing hallucination. And the last thing here is you want to ideally have one or two output tasks that are the goals of this prompt. Whereas again, with reasoning, you can give multiple tasks depending on what you're going for, which is a good segue to reasoning models, which in general require minimal input, assuming that you have concise, succinct, and a very high value per word or high value per token that you're entering in. And it's good enough to give a generalized understanding of what the goal is and what the nuances it should look for are as well as anything it should really avoid. Unlike non-reasoning models where you have to spoon feed, these ones can do the step-by-step -step thinking on their own. So you just need to give it enough information to take it and extrapolate. So with our old world, we had a section called context, which is usually pretty small, where you do some form of role assignment. In this world, you that context section would be probably double the size, and that's all you'd need. You wouldn't really need the examples and all these different sections that we're typically used to, like guidelines, etc. And on the example side, again, you can give it an example. It doesn't necessarily hurt that much, but I've just noticed that if you give it enough clues and hints or even things to avoid, it's much better at actually handling the task. And if we go back to the N8N portion, you can see here it says analyze a task by identifying objectives and context, and then clearly separate instructions from any context. And then if using conversational interfaces, incorporate a system or role directive like you are a insert uh, role. And here it says tailor your prompt based on the style on the model. So allow advanced models to infer intent with minimal examples, but be explicit for cost sensitive models that re require clear direct instructions. Now, what I want to do to improve this slightly before you see it in Gumroad is just add some more hints as to what the different models are. So I'll just say that reasoning models are this, this, and this, and then GPT 4.0 and 4.0, 4.5 are the old world. So optimize it for that. But other than that, this is a decent prompt to get you going to do meta prompting at scale. If we go to Anthropic here and we zoom in a tad and just double click on the AI agent module, you'll see we also have a pretty long prompt here. And then this is based on prompting Claude. So in general, the non reasoning models, zero shot, which in plain English means not giving too many examples tends to even work well with Claude out of the box, but it does benefit from examples in general. So one to three examples for anything style or copy one to five for coding based exercises or one to two for very structured outputs and slightly similar to reasoning models. You want to keep the prompts concise and hyper direct. Like you don't necessarily want to feed Claude a three page version of a prompt. That's not very useful and formatting is useful as well with Claude. One thing I've noticed in the past is if you've heard of XML, if you don't know what that means, if you imagine the smaller than or larger than signs, these are XML tags. A lot of times Claude benefits from prompts that are translated in the XML tags or used as markdown in this case. And if we go to the reasoning model, just like before, you want the step-by-step -step thinking to be taken care of by the model itself. Now Claude 3.7 is a very nuanced example because it can both have hybrid thinking it uses reasoning logic when it really needs to, and it uses the old world way of LLMs where you have input output immediately, depending on the perceived complexity of the nature of the task. So 3.7 is a reasoning model, but one, super expensive, just an FYI, and two, it has hybrid thinking. So it's more nimble than let's say 03, which is no matter what you do, it's always going to think. Now with 03 mini, you can control, is it low level of thinking, medium level or high level? But no matter what you want, it's still going to think even if it's for a second or two. So interestingly, the XML tags, which again, this is what that looks like, don't seem to hurt the 3.7 reasoning model from Claude. It's still good, if not the same. And in some cases, it has slightly better performance. So I would still use those XML tags where it makes sense. If you just want a very basic prompt, you probably don't need tags all over the place because it will be good enough without the tags to understand what's happening. I'm more referring to if you have a prompt that spans a page and a half XML tags or some form of tagging 
of some nature like Markdown is going to be helpful to structure that prompt for the LLM. And when it comes to Gemini, this is a different beast where it prompts, it sounds, it has a very different personality. If anything, it has a very robotic and non-warm personality, which makes sense because I don't know if you know it or not, but Claude Lily has a designated person to develop its personality. So it has like a personality officer that just talks to it all day and gives feedback to the engineering team on how it needs to change and vary the way it responds and the flow, etc. Gemini is straight to it. It cuts through all the tonality and all the warmth and just gives you what you're looking for. So in the same vein, you want to be direct with Gemini the same way it's direct back to you. So you want to add the contextual segmentation, any tailored examples with non-reasoning models, just like we said before. And with the reasoning models, you want to supply only the essential context. And I would say even less context than OpenAI and Claude. I just noticed that very minimal inputs in Gemini are better, especially with the thinking models. And you, even when it comes to the context, if you remember before I said you want to load instead of one to two sentences, maybe four. With Gemini, I find that adding just two sentences of context is good comma enough for it to extrapolate and do what it needs to do. And by the way, if you find my prompt engineering related tutorials and content super helpful for you and you are a business owner, business leader or CEO, I'm releasing a private end to end masterclass course on prompt engineering from theory all the way to actual application and use cases in a business in our paid early AI adopters community. So if that is of interest to you, along with everything else you'll get, check out the second link in the description below and maybe I'll see you inside. Now we have an understanding as to how these models work. And if we go back, you might be asking the question, you know what, Mark, good for you. You know how to prompt these and you're giving us a cheat sheet, but what happens when things change? What happens when new models come down the pipe? How do we know how to talk to these different personalities, these different types or tiers of models, reasoning, non-reasoning, and different personalities of those models. Well, one is obviously the more you practice, the better you get. But if you wanted the cheat code answer is you can literally use something like deep research or normal research from perplexity or anything that offers research in general. So if we just go to pro here, and I'm just gonna choose pro just for the speed of it. And I say something like, I want you to do a full deep dive as to how I should best prompt DeepSeek based on their documentations, the most highly rated YouTube videos you've seen, and the most informative content you could see. Come up with a cheat sheet and roadmap for how I can prompt DeepSeek R1 models. And from there, I'm just going to send this and let it do its thing and come up with a cheat sheet that we can use to now empower and enrich our mini prompt engineers in NADN. And because we're using pro, not deep research, it took around 20 to 30 seconds to come up with this very detailed response. You can see here at the very bottom, common pitfalls to avoid, overloading with instructions, using few shot examples unnecessarily. And if we go to the sources, you'll see it went through the actual GitHub. It went through a YouTube video from well, yours truly, what? very handsome fellow there, as well as 36 other sources. So you can imagine if you made this deep research and you just gave it that task, you can get a cheat sheet for how to talk to, or at least hints on how to talk to certain LLM. Now, again, in practice, when it comes to producing the work we do for clients and we do it at scale and we do tons of testing, we're going to naturally have a competitive advantage as to understanding the hyper nuances of these models. But that's what these videos are for as well as my channel. So this is a great way to improve the prompts you're going to get out of the box with this N8N automation and improve it for any new models in the future. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments down below. It helps the video, helps the algo, helps the channel. And if you're interested in joining my paid community for business owners and business leaders, check out that second link in the description below, and I'll see you next time.